Hello, players of... My race, the Game & Watchers, have a small problem. Our competitive viability has become so dull, underrepresented and scarce, that we are no longer able to dwell here. But I, Chairman Kayo, have a solution. We are constructing a pristine new exploit using the choices of AI components available. So, what does this mean to you, you might ask? Using highly sophisticated programming, which you couldn't possibly understand, we will be extracting a large portion of your viability and adding it to our new one. Unfortunately, this change of viability will cause your character to spin out of control and trip into the blast zone where it will explode into a flaming ball of gas, but of course, sacrifices must be made. Thank you for your cooperation. Cut! And if you don't like it, you can take your whiny, sniveling, snot-nosed top tiers, form a line behind me and kiss my... We're still on? Well then turn it off, you idiot! <laughs> Melee is not random. Well, mostly. <sighs> Allow me to explain why. And why you should also fear its surprisingly high chance of exploitation. Now that I've got your attention, kids, today I'm serving up a digestible, bite-sized, yet informative overview of Melee's pseudo-random number generator. I'll uncover how it works, why it can be exploited, and how I've come pretty damn close to consistently predicting Game of Watch's judge numbers. This might just change how you view randomness in gaming forever. And perhaps a bit ambitiously, it could even shake up Game & Watch's spot on the tier list. Oh, and uh, I guess Luigi and Peach too. But they're not my main focus. Let's kick things off by breaking down Melee's RNG system. Now, there are several methods out there of generating random numbers, but the one Melee uses is called a Linear Congruential Generator, or an LCG for short. Basically, it's a mathematical formula that cycles through values to produce what we perceive as quote-unquote randomness. On paper, it looks actually kind of fun. Every 2 to the power of 32 calls, the seed repeats perfectly. But here's the catch. Melee only uses the top 16 bits of this number, giving us 2 to the power of 16 distinct random values. Ooh, that's actually a lot more predictable. These values control every random element in the game. Turnips, misfires, Game & Watch's chef move, and yes, the infamous judge. Oh, the eye off of any throw. <laughs> oh! Oh my god! Oh, stop popping off please. about that. Stop popping off for nines. Bitch, I lost 28 in a row! Shut the fuck up! Every time you boot up melee, the RNG seed starts at a fixed value and then progresses in predictable steps. The kicker? The initial seed is based entirely on the GameCube's internal clock when the game boots up. Same date and time, same seed and progression path. Every. Single. Time. This means Melee's randomness isn't truly random, boys. It's deterministic and mappable. Yes! <laughs> So theoretically, you can predict almost any bit of RNG in advance. Well, if you've got the godlike tech skill to pull it off, but more on that in a moment. Now here's where things get even crazier. Understanding how the RNG seeds behave in Melee opened up a whole new world of possibilities. So first we have the Frame Zero Seed. As mentioned earlier, when you start up Melee, it initializes the RNG seed using the current date and time of the GameCube. Or Dolphin, if you're using an emulator. This sets the first seed at frame 0. It progresses on frame 1, and then stays static until you reach the main menu. If you quit to the title screen and then head back into the menu, the seed advances to the next one. Once the game starts, the RNG seeds follow the exact same path every time, provided the inputs and conditions remain unchanged. Now, let's talk about Judge, the infamous hammer that rolls a number between 1 and 9. It has its own set of quirks that haven't been fully explored until now. What's commonly known is that the game bans the last two numbers you rolled. At the start of a match, or after respawning on the Angel platform, the banned numbers are 1 and 2. For example, roll a 9, and the banned numbers become 2 and 9. 
Next, you roll an 8, and the bad numbers become 9 and 8. Simple enough. But what happens if the RNG seed you're on would give you a bad number? Well, it turns out the game selects the nearest lower non bad number. This applies globally, even when two Game & Watch players roll judge at the exact same time. They'll both pull the same number, unless that number is individually banned for them. With all that in mind, after weeks of researching and testing, I've managed to create a tool to predict the outcomes of judge, with a little help from good old ChatGPT. Pretty cool, huh? It's a machine learning model written in Python that first takes the current RNG seed, secondly considers bad numbers, and then finally fits out the predicted judge roll. In testing, it's been 77% accurate across all legal stages and all bad number combinations, predicting 77 out of 100 rolls correctly. And with adaptive training on incorrect rolls, this could get even better. But wait, you might say. External software? Yeah, there's no way that's being allowed, bro. Cheater! Cheater! And yeah, sure, you have a point. But you might be forgetting something. Once I have this all figured out, you might not even need this tool at all. Let me explain. Remember when I mentioned that Melee always uses the exact same starting RNG seed based on the day and time you start up the game? Well, if someone were to know what that seed is, or use random elements in the game as clues, then figuring out, mapping, and creating a spreadsheet could make the tool unnecessary. That's right! Imagine you're up against Hungrybox, Mango, Cody, or any of the other top players. While they're thinking, what the fuck are you doing? You're instilling fear into them by knowing exactly when your random options will happen. They won't know when you can pull off that devastating line, but you will. But on a more serious note though, if this works, it could be an absolute game changer for characters like Game & Watch or even Luigi. Players could consistently execute these options, knowing when a 9 or a misfire is coming, turning what was once left to chance into an actual reliable part of the toolkit. However, there are still some challenges to overcome before this can be reliably executed in-game. And even if I do get it working, playing it off during a match will be just as difficult. You think learning how to multi-shine is hard? Hello. You think pivoting is a nightmare? Dude. Oh, you poor, poor child. You ain't seen nothing yet. So let's break down these challenges. The first one is the seed cycling speed. The major hurdle is understanding how fast RNG seeds progress between frames. And guess what? They are not consistent. <laughs> On stages like Battlefield or Dreamland, the seed mostly cycles once per frame, which is forgiving and makes prediction quite a bit easier. For a final destination, it might cycle 50, 80, or even 120 fucking times per frame! And Fountain of Dreams is the absolute worst, cycling even more frequently. To put it simply, the RNG seed can cycle over 7,200 times per second in-game. Plus, potentially. Which is absolutely fucking insane. This inconsistency makes real-time prediction currently very difficult. Especially on stages where the seed cycles rapidly. Fixing this is the final step before I can release the judge predictor prototype. Until then, looks like I've got more work to do, I guess. Number 2. Execution difficulty. You need to be frame perfect to pull this off because the RNG seed changes every single frame. With Judge, for example, if you use the move even a single frame later, you'll get a different number. So even if you know when a 9 is coming, if your timing isn't perfect, your plan just goes up in smoke. Which means, in a comedic way, every single 9 you've ever gone with Game & Watch in your entire life was frame perfect. <laughs> Unknown variables. This is especially problematic in in-person or local tournament setups. But let's can figure out the game's random selections as clues. If you don't know exactly when the GameCube or Wii started the game up, you're out of luck for predicting RNG-specific moves. But who knows, maybe someone skilled enough will find an ingenious trick to make this more reliable. In conclusion, Melee's RNG system, despite being absolute insanity, is actually a deterministic system just waiting to be exploited. My judge predictor is still a work in progress, but the potential here is just absolutely staggering. If I could solve the issue of the RNG seed cycling and implement it into my code, 
Melee's RNG system, and all the moves and actions tied to it, could be completely under our control. So, for now, just remember, randomness isn't always as random as it seems. And maybe, just maybe, if luck, or rather, skill, is on my side, Game & Watch will rise up the tier list. A2 Melee Game & Watch, let's make it happen!